Been waiting a long time to talk to you all about this pair of headphones right here. This is the ES Labs ES1A, one alpha. Uh, this is an Estat, um, boutique Estat made in Hong Kong. Uh, by a guy who just uh, absolutely adores eStats and headphone technology. And he's been, I guess, uh, I don't know the full story, but I, my understanding is he's been uh, repairing and sort of um, refurbishing classic stacks and other, you know, iconic old headphones. And he learned so much about uh, the technology behind it and ultimately thought that he could sort of build almost a Omega style tribute but bring some of his own signature and ideas to it uh, and here it is and it is awesome um, I love this headphone uh, and I really wanted to um, spend more time with more e-stats before I came back and did a review of this because I don't not a lot of folks have them there's not a, a ton of coverage on it so I definitely want to do my due diligence on this one uh, unlike normal, where I just kind of like listen to something for a little bit and tell you guys what I think about it. Uh, these I've listened to, it's not quite that, but these I've listened to for, for like I said, over a year now uh, and gotten a chance in that time to compare them against a bunch of different stack stuff. Um, you know, Dan Clark Audio, Hyphamen, just a bunch of different uh, ESTAT stuff, and I, I think I have a pretty good uh, grasp on, on, on what's important about these. So... Let's dive in. Enough preamble. Um, I guess a couple of notes real quick, you know, very much modeled after the older stack sort of Omega style. Um, pretty comfortable. These are not not the lightest things by any means. Um, it does include two different of this like dampening ring that you can swap out. Um, these are the heavier metal ones, which uh, I have no problem with the weight, so I'm happy with those. I think they sound a little better. Um, there are also a couple of different pad options. These ones are the ones that in theory have the darker sound signature. The other ones have sort of the more uh, cut you like a knife transparent uh, signature. Um, so I think uh, both are not included. I think it's a little bit of an upcharge to get um, uh, the second set if you want them. Um, cool sort of side note. I found that for me, and, and I have this, I guess I have a tiny head, but I often find, like, I didn't find that there was quite enough clamp to sort of just, you know, it probably wasn't an issue, but I just sort of wanted them to fit on my head a little tighter. Um, and so I worked with uh, the guy who builds these um, to actually fabricate a new headband for them. And that's the kind of thing that's so cool about working with a very small boutique shop is like, I'm not going to call Sennheiser and be like, hey, I think your headband could be a little, um, a little tighter. Um, but this guy was like really nice to work with me, and, and so uh, we, we got that sorted out, which is was kind of like one of my, my few livability gripes uh, with this headphone. Okay, how does it sound? Well, I'll just kind of compare it against um, some of the stack stuff that I've tried, because I think that's they're, they're the, the, the king of the roosts. That's not an expression. They're the top of the hill. I don't know. They're the cream of the crop. They're the, they're the benchmarks of the electrostat world that that sounds that sounds more right um so start with the lambdas right i think compared to the lambdas um the es1a is is smoother not necessarily softer but smoother the the leading edge feels a bit less sort of abrupt i mean lambdas have that great sort of energy and punch which is really addictive and fun and this is certainly a punchy e-stat but Compared to the Lambdas, I'm going to say it's just a little less abrupt. The The bass is definitely more impactful on these. It definitely feels heavier. And the vocals sort of step forward and demand attention, but at the same time feel a bit less forced and less uh, and a bit more natural. Um, and just in general, I find these less fatiguing and a more enjoyable um, listen. They're a little uh, less efficient. They're a little harder to drive than the Lambdas, which, uh, you know, offer you kind of more um, uh, more energizer options. You will need a bit more juice to kind of power these over the Lambdas. Um, so, summary Lambdas, I'd say you might lose a little bit of energy and impact on these, but what you gain is um, a more natural, more fluid, um, and still very sort of, uh, you know... Um, impactful listen so 007s right you know sort of the the smooth offering of the the stacks world 
These are much easier to drive than the 007s. The sound stage is wider. Everything just feels more open. There's more space around each element. Um, the sound's almost kind of a bit more sculptural to my ears. The you know strings have more sort of passion and energy. It just it's the notes feel heavier. Um, it it is a little more um, sort of fatiguing. It's like kind of be sharper than the 007. So like you know, high octave piano strikes can be like, oh, that's a lot coming at you. Um, vocals are much more forward and I'd say sort of like present. Um, the presentation's like a little bit, a little bit drier maybe um, than that warmth you get and, and that like um, sort of, um, sort of full mid bass sound you get on the 009s. Um, these have stronger sub bass though. The bass goes deeper, it's more impactful. Um, and it just it just feels more real like uh you know um it's like the sound is both closer to you but yet at the same time more open than the 007 hard to explain um i think those are the most app comparisons sort of price wise so i think these are sort of in that um and it fluctuates because you're buying in hong kong dollars and then they're shipping to the states and are you getting the pads or not but let's just say these things are somewhere in the 1500 to 2000 dollar price range and that sort of is comparable right now with the uh, the uh, lambdas and the 007 sort of get you in that price range if you're stepping up now to the 009 009s territory um, again I'd say these are smoother than those they're like more fluid they're so aka a bit softer um, but just yeah it's just a, in the 009 and the 009s, there's sort of more emphasis on that e statiness of having a super sharp leading edge to everything and so much hyper definition around everything that it, it starts to start to erode the the natural the, like just the the fluidity of music. Whereas I think these do a better job of balancing that kind of fun e stati energy with um, something that feels more natural, more musical over time. Um, they're less detailed uh, and have less control in the treble region than the 009 and 009S for sure. Um, they have more bass. I wouldn't describe it as better bass. Like the, the 009S has incredible bass. These have more. <laughs> it's more generous, um, but it might not be as uh, structured and, 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 you know, as, as good, really, as detailed. Um, you know, if, if you compare these to more of like high-end planars, I think these are going to be a little bit drier, a little bit sharper. Um, but they do have this fullness and the bass is really great. So there's a lot, very comparable there. Um, vocals may be a little thinner on these, a little set back from like the best uh, sort of planars. Um, but these are very spacious. They're very atmospheric. They, you know, little things sparkle around your head, little, you know, drum taps and cymbal bits and little bits of stringed instruments you know all that stuff kind of dances around in that special e stat way that's that's just for me so addictive um so they sort of oscillate between a sense of fluidity and a sense of sharpness and impact um and that's why they're for me my my favorite e stat of everything i've tried because i think they balance um you know they they balance those e stat qualities i love um without kind of uh, <laughs> wrecking the music for me, <laughs> honestly. Um, and I think at their sort of price point for value and the level of energizer it takes to run them, I think they sort of represent a very, I mean, they're still, it's still expensive. This is expensive East at territory, but I think they represent an, a more balanced approach to it. Um, I think I was saying this in the 009 S video, but there's something about like, if you, or one, if you're just like an e-stat, if you're just going like, I'm just going to go with one system and it's going to be e-stats and I'm going to try to get it to satisfy me on all levels as much as possible. And so I'm going to get the top of line stacks and a really nice energizer. I'm just going to go down that route. Um, I think for some people, their brains are tuned that way and they'll get a ton of enjoyment out of it. For me, I'm always going to find a little frustration with the e-stat stat sound, that lack of naturalness, that timbre that's a bit off for me. Um, the sort of over defining of things um, that gets in the way of the music. And so I would never give up all headphones just to be an Estat listener. And so I think with these, you get the chance to have a incredibly competent uh, Estat in the collection um, 
without totally destroying the bank and then you can still have <laughs> um you know an, a, a really nice plane art out to to be maybe that more closer to all in one at least that's kind of where my head's at i think this is getting into super subjective personal taste territory but um that's kind of how i i feel about them anyway um yeah i hopefully that sort of helps if you tried anything i i sort of compared it against it might give you some framework um uh, i got to try these on a bunch of different uh energizers over the year um um, nothing that I put in that crazy like blue Hawaii territory, but plenty of good stuff. Um, and like I said, they're not too hard to drive, but y you're not going to get the most out of them if you're underpowering them. That's for sure, and that's the the truth of a lot of a lot of e stats where you go like it's loud, but eh. Um, I guess you could say the same of planars and dynamics too. That just sometimes you can make it loud, but if it's not the right power, it's, you know they, they don't. It's it's not really showing off what the headphone can do. Anyway, um, I'm sure I forgot things I wanted to tell you uh, after living with these for so long. It's unfortunately the, the Dread Ribbon cable, um, which I despise, but, you know, c'est la vie, such is life. Um, anyway, yeah, uh, ES, uh, oh, quantity. I wonder how many of these there are in the world right now. My copy is number 44 from a year ago. Uh, I don't, maybe there's like 100, maybe there's 200. I don't know. I'd be really curious. I know uh, the builder of these recently did a dynamic headphone project, a closed back dynamic headphone project, which looks really interesting. And he also makes um, uh, a few other little uh, cool mods uh, that are worth checking out. So, uh, yeah, that is it for me and the uh, ES Labs ES1A Signcraft. Sign in out. <laughs>